A great prophet has arisen among us. God has visited his people. New every morning. of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer, for you only are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Give 
Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal, that we may lose no things eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. A reading from the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 11, beginning at verse 1 to 15. In the spring of the year, the time when king, kings go out to battle, David sent Joab with his officers and all Israel with him. They ravished the Amorites and besieged Rahab. But David remained at Jerusalem. It happened late one afternoon when David rose from his couch and was walking about on the front of the king's house that he saw from the roof a woman bathing. The woman name was very beautiful. David sent someone to inquire about the woman. It was reported, this is Bat Bathsheba, daughter of El Elam, the wife of Uriah, the Hittite. So David sent messengers to get her, and she came to him, and he lay with her. Now she was purifying herself after her period. Then she returned to her house. The woman conceived and she sent and told David, I am pregnant. So David sent word to Joab, send me Uriah the Hittite. And Joab sent Uriah to David. When Uriah came to him, David asked how Joab and the people fared and how the war was going. Then David said to Uriah, go down to your house and wash your feet. Uriah went out of the king's house and there followed him. A present, a, a present from the king but Uriah slept at the entrance of the king's house with, with all the servants of his lord and did not go down to his house. When they told David Uriah did not go down to his house, David said to Uriah, you have just come from a journey why did you not go down to your house? Uriah said to David, the, the, the ark and Israel and Judah remained in, boot, in the booth. And the Lord Joab, the servant of, the, of my Lord, are campaigning in the open field. Shall I then go to my house? 
to eat and to drink and to lie with my wife as you live and as your soul lives, I will not do so, such a thing. Then David said to Uriah, remain here today also and tomorrow. I will send you back. So Uriah remained in Jerusalem that day on the next day. The, on the next day, David invited him to eat and drink in his presence and made him drunk. And in the evening, he, he went out to lie on, the, on his couch with the servants of his Lord, but he did not go down to his house. In the morning, David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it by the hand of Uriah. The letter he wrote set Uriah in the forefront of the hardest fighting and then draw back from him so that he may be struck down and died. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Who will read the psalm responsibly? Okay, we'll read it together. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. All are corrupt and commit abnormal acts. There is none who does any good. The Lord looks down from heaven upon us all to see if there is any who is wise, if there is one who seeks after God. Everyone has proved faithless. All alike have turned back. There is none who does good. No, not one. Have they no knowledge of all those evil doers who eat up my people like bread and do not call upon the law? See how they tremble with fear because God is in the company of the righteous. Their aim is to confound the plans of the afflicted, but the Lord is their refuge. Oh, that Israel's deliverance will come out of Zion when the Lord restored the fortunes of his people. Jacob will rejoice and Israel be glad. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and shall be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Ephesians, chapter 3, beginning from verse 14 to 21. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes his name. I pray that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit and that Christ may dwell in, you, in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge so that you may be filled with all fullness of God. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly 
far more than all we can ask or imagine. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to Lord. God. The gradual, O God of Bethel. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. After this, Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A light crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. 
Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews was near. When he looked up and saw a light car coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered, Six men's wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they among so many people? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated. So also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, gather up the fragments left over so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled 12 baskets. When the people saw the sign that had been done, they began to say, this is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and make and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into a boat, started across the sea to Capernaum, it was dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, It is I, do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land toward which they were going. Beloved, the Gospel of Christ. speak to you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. When you go into a place 
and you see familiar faces and friends, then you are at peace. When I come here always, I am at peace. Because I see familiar faces and friends. And I'll be here two more Sundays with you. Do not be afraid. <laughs> the Old Testament story coming from David is a very strange one. David the king has taken somebody's wife, one of his soldier's wife. Then he wrote a letter to that same soldier, take it to the commander. He didn't know that that letter was going to kill him. He sent the letter and behold, he was killed. But if you go further into the story, when Prophet Nathan confronted David, he told David, if God knew that you wanted more wives, God would have provided it. Even now, even now, you have so many wives, you inherited the concubines. From Saul. And in the story that followed, David repented. And the Psalms says there is no one who is righteous. We are all corrupt and have committed abnormal acts. That's what the Psalms told us. Are we going to dispute it? Look around the world. Look around the world. We always call our politicians corrupt. Almost all our leaders are corrupt, and we ourselves, we are corrupt. Is it the kettle calling the pot black? And the Ephesians will sum up the gospel today. This is something that we always say after Mass. Glory to God, whose power, working in us. Please, let's, let's say that I want to hear a certain part. Glory to God, whose power, working in us. Can do, do infinitely more than mo we can ask or imagine. Yeah. More than we can ask or imagine. More than we can ask or imagine. Is there anyone here who is not in need of anything? Is there anyone here, present here? I, myself included. Who doesn't need anything? If you don't need anything in your life, then this place is not yours. You are not supposed to be here. We are all in need. Those who are following Jesus Christ, they were in need. And from time immemorial, all of God's creation I've been in need. Plants need water, air, nutrients from the soil, and sunshine. Humans need air, water, food, shelter, clothing, the sun, and fellowship, and the changing seasons, and many other things to survive. We are all the time in need. Our readings today, and especially the Gospel of John, is about all sufficiency of God. All sufficiency of God. It is only God who does not need.
So far as we are God's creation, we will be in want. Yes, our famous Psalm 23 says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. But the emphasis on this Psalm is the Lord is my shepherd. If the Lord is your shepherd, truly, if he's your shepherd, if he's my shepherd, even so far as I'm a human being, there are some small, small, small things that I may want. I may even have them, but do not know that I have them. And so, I'll be looking for them. And Jesus tells us in Matthew 7, 7, this is a very passage that many Sunday school people know. Ask, and it will be given you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be open for you. It's all about need, asking, searching, and looking for. People are following Jesus for various reasons. Some wanted to see more signs. Others wanted to be healed. Others wanted even their families to prosper. To have more bread to eat. Some saw the signs and they were fascinated because they thought Jesus was a magician. Others wanted healing for themselves. And others were asking, is this the Messiah who is to come? Can he help me? If we're to be yesterday or Friday, people be asking, Lord, why can't you make me win the marks? How much was the marks on Friday? 75 million? Imagine winning 75 million. Won't you go crazy? That's why we are not winning, you and I. If we win, we'll go crazy. So please, stay calm. Because God has given us more than we can ask or imagine. Jesus is in control of every situation in our life. Jesus is concerned about human needs. He has the resources. Do you remember the manna in the wilderness? He gave them more than what they asked for. Do you remember our forefathers when they were thirsty in the wilderness? He gave them water. More than they could ask for. God always come to our aid. Glory be to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask. God is wonderful. He is still God. Jesus gave the people more than they could eat. Five pieces of bread and two fish. And they fed 5,000. In some accounts, they say 5,000 men. The women and children were not counted. And they collected 12 baskets. The size of the baskets, I don't know. But don't forget, they were near the Sea of Tiberias. They were fishermen all around it. If you go and see the baskets, fishermen have to carry fish from the boat. 
then you will know how big the baskets were. However, Jesus does not work in vacuum. He uses people like us, other people. How did it come that only that small boy has bread and fish? How? All those men and women, only that small boy. You and I can never understand that. And that five pieces of bread and two fish, he blessed it, distributed it. They ate and were filled. Somebody like me who eat three pieces. Somebody who eat more. And yet there was some left over. Isn't God wonderful? God is wonderful. He supplies our needs all the time. All the time. We may even have it, but we would not know. Now, try this. When you take your son out to a picnic, buy him or her ice cream, and then stretch your hand to take back the ice cream and see what will happen. No, 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 I won't give it to you. I won't give it to you. It's mine. But when the boy was asked for the five pieces of bread and fish, we are not told he said no. He just gave it out. God works in mysterious ways. He uses human beings like us to further his work. And everybody is in need. There was once a rich, very rich man, very, very rich. When people see him coming, they bow down. Because in that community, he was very rich. Past all of them. And one day, his only daughter was to have a wedding. So the whole village trooped to the house to see how the daughter would dress. And when the daughter was being dressed, part of the clothes or her wedding gown got torn loose. Now, the daughter was crying because she couldn't go out with this torn dress to the wedding. When everybody said, oh, oh, what can we do? What can we do? That rich man didn't have a needle in his house. A needle. He didn't have a needle. Yes, he had millions. He had millions. You see, he was in need. He was in want of a needle. How much does a needle cost? So one old lady in the crowd, poor, 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 he ran to her house and brought a needle and a thread and sold it. And then there was the wedding. And everybody else rejoiced. See the wonders of God. We are all need. God give us more than we can ask or imagine, so that we also can give to others who don't have. Can give to others who don't have. That is it. God is wonderful. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ. God is always ready to give, to give us more than we ask for. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
Can we stand, please? Let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered on the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Praise of the people. Almighty and eternal God, you are ever present to the needs and concerns of your children. We lift our hearts, minds, and souls to you at this moment. As we pray saying, Lord, hear our prayer. God of tears, you are the giver of joy. Hear us as we pray for the sick. We pray for those with chronic illness and for those who have life-threatening conditions and for those with inadequate medical care or coverage. Bring the healing we need. We pray in a special way for the following members of our congregation and their caregivers. Carol, Carol. Thelma, Thelma, Maureen, Maureen. Joe, Joe, George, George. Marjorie, Marjorie, Clifton, Clifton. and Pauline, Pauline. Kathleen, Kathleen, Ruben, Ruben. Nellie, Nellie. Andrew, Andrew, Carmen, Carmen. Felicia, Felicia, Ian, Ian. Pat, Pat, Paul, Paul. Ethel, Ethel, Doreen, Doreen. Divine, Divine, Rima, Rima. Hyacinth, Hyacinth, Angela, Angela. Erica, Erica, Rita, Rita. and Dorothy. Dorothy. We ask for those who, whom members of this gathered community have asked for our prayers, especially Benedict Atu, Ida and Ken Bahador, Glenda Bostic, Thelma Chesto, Daniel Christie, Gary Duncan, Angela Eady, Jason Falbo, Evelyn Greenidge, Portia, Lansdale Guy, Ruthlyn Hoyt, Ningozi Atu, Iabu Ogundrin, Eric and Family, Gregory Linton, Patrick, Vaughn Martin, Heather Maynard, Joseph Murray, Cindy, Telsey Kellyman, Leopold Austin Jr., Joy Agard Mighty, Patricia Adams, Angela Popolo, Elizabeth Patton, Eva Manifold, and Jermaine, Cora Swaby, Valda and Sarita Domingo, Marielle, Marianne, and Valerie Walters, Shanice Ashmady, Florence Umugabe, Reverend Mark Regis, Diane Denny, Alyssa, Athena, Latoya, and Four Avando. We intercede for those now on our hearts and minds. We pray saying, Lord, hear our prayer. Hear us as we pray for all who are hungry. 
We pray for those who live in regions of drought and famine, for those who cannot afford nutritious food and for the vulnerable who are not adequately fed. We pray for those in our own community experiencing the challenges of food insecurity and we intercede for our friends and clients of the Saints Cafe. We lift this ministry up before you in its outreach to the poor, hungry, and homeless within our community. We pray for our coordinator, volunteers, and all who give generously of themselves to support this work week by week. We pray for those, we pray for all who receive meals, support, and a Christian friendship through this program. Grant that your name may be glorified in all that we do and in the lives of whom we are privileged to serve. Give us food, give us the food we need. We pray saying, Lord, hear our prayer. Hear us as we pray for those who visit us. We pray for those who visit us week by week and for those who gathered virtually for our worship. Meet them even now in their area of need. Continue to draw this community of faith, children, youth, and families. Grant that our worship and our gathering may so transformed by your risen life that all who visit with us may encounter you. We pray saying, Lord, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. Hear us as we pray for those who grieve. We pray for those who mourn a loved one and for those who have lost loved ones due to war, natural disaster, or other human calamity, for those whose communities are no more, and for those who cannot imagine a joyful future. Give us comfort to restore hope. We pray saying, Lord, hear our prayer. Hear us as we pray for the world's victims. We pray for those who are caught in violence, oppression, human trafficking, or for those who are trapped in other self-seeking and for those who suffer from neglect. Make us mindful and repentant of our own violent, self-seeking and neglectful actions and grant us freedom from all evil. We pray saying, Lord, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. Hear us as we pray for the nations. We pray for the leaders of the nations, for national and provincial governments, local municipalities, and for all who hold positions of public trust, responsibility, or authority. We pray saying, Lord, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. Hear us as we pray for the universal Christian church of which you are the head. We pray for the gathered body of believers in each part of the world, for those in the midst of conflicts, division, or scandal, and for those striving with humility and integrity to faithfully bear the light of the gospel. In the Jolican Church in Canada, we pray for the Right Reverend Lydia Mamakwa, the Right Reverend Larry Beardy, and the Right Reverend Morris Filter, bishops, and for the clergy and the people of the sp- spiritual ministry of Misha Mikuwish. In the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada, We pray for the Dean, Councils, and Congregation of the Southern Area of the Synod of Alberta and the Territories. We pray saying, Lord, Lord, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. God of the poor and God of the poor in spirit, we pray for your help against all that oppresses. We look forward to the kingdom you have promised and are bringing even now through Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. 
Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. We confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your world and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And the peace of the Lord with you. Offertory, praise the one who breaks the darkness. Yeah. 
Let us pray. God of grace, accept all we offer you this day as we look toward the glory you have promised. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Eucharistic Prayer 3. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. You are the source of light and life for all your creation. You made us your own image and call us to new life in Jesus Christ our Savior. Therefore we praise you, joining your voices to proclaim the glory of your name. the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in this last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night he was handed over to suffering death, and that you freely accepted, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, 
we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gates, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us, your Son, in his sacrifice, that we, made acceptable in him, may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new, and bring us to that city of light, where you dwell with all your sons and daughters. Through Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to sing. this bread to share in the body of Christ. The gifts of God for the people of God. Lamb of God, take away the sin of the world have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, 
you take away the sin of the world, grant us your peace. People of all ages, the denominations who are baptized into Christ are invited and encouraged to share their communion. If you will not be receiving the bread and wine, we will be pleased if you will join us at the Lord's table for a blessing. Communion hymn. The body of Christ for salvation I will pour more wine on it the body of Christ 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 and the body of Christ Christ. The body of Christ. The 
body of Christ.
Bread for birthdays and anniversaries and other occasions. Lord Jesus Christ, you come to us whenever we call upon you, whenever we are in need. We humbly ask at this moment for all those who are in need of any kind in this parish. Lord, we pray you to hear them. Give them their heart's desire, as may be more than what they need, so that it may also be spread to your people to know your power, your glory. Lord, listen to our prayer. We know that you have asked us to ask and we are asking to search and we will find to knock on your door and you open as i have said even before we ask you know it we thank you for this day and bless all those who are present here may they see your glory forever and ever Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, we are here today for many reasons. So did the apostles and disciples followed you. You healed them of their infirmities. The deaf, you make them hear. The crippled, you make them stand and walk and run. Oh Lord, we know that you will give it us if only we trust in you and ask. May your name be blessed forever and ever. Amen. I have a dear brother priest here who I do not know. Probably he knows me. Emmanuel. Reverend Canon. Yes. From Nigeria. Ni part of Nigeria. Oh, you are my brother in law. <laughs> my sister is married somebody from Imoku, near Port. You see? Ah, I know that man. You're for your See how wonder God is? See my brother in law. Tomorrow is your birthday. Blessed be God who created everything, who created us in his own image and gave us this. To count and live with him. Even though he has given us 70 years, he makes it pass more than that because of his mercy and his grace. Oh Lord God, we thank you for giving this our brother another year. Fill him with your grace and dare him with your spirit that whoever he touches and cleanses may be in your name and to your glory. 
This we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the mighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and keep you this day forevermore. Amen. I may be preaching again. Don't do anybody wrong. You may not know. You may not know where the person is, who the person is. Now, after church, we will we'll talk and I'll know you better. I didn't know you are from Imoku. I didn't know. I know you are from Nigeria. That's all that I know. <laughs> Thanks be to God. Pray after communion. God of grace, we have received the memorial of the death and resurrection of your son. May your love poured into us bring us to your promises. We ask this in the name of our Redeemer, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, let us pray for all those who are on vacation, especially for our Archdeacon, Father Theodore, and for all those who are not here. Pray for their safety return, that they may come and worship with us to praise the Lord our God. The blessing. The peace of God which passes on understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Other announcements. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. I hope you are all doing well and having a wonderful Sunday so far. Um, very warm welcome to everyone who's joining us for the first time today. So anyone who's visiting with us, welcome. We are happy to have you. And for everyone who's joining us online. And also thank you to Ken and Abba for joining us for the next three Sundays. I'm excited and happy to have you here with us. So in terms of announcements, um, while Father Theodore is away on vacation, um, we can join St. Paul's morning prayer. I believe they start at 7.30 or 7.15 a.m. I believe it's 7.30. So if you arrive at 7.15, you are a little bit early. You have time to grab your coffee or your tea or get yourself prepared. Um, so you can join St. Paul's Morning Prayer at 7.30 a.m. Tuesday evening Bible study and prayer group continues this week at 7 p.m. Thursday evening's Bible study is on a summer break and will resume in September. And Sunday school is also on a summer break and will resume in September. Saints Cafe is operating as usual this week on Monday and Wednesday. There are still a few spots available for anyone who's interested in going on the bus trip to see Daniel. Um, so if you are interested, um, there are still a few spots available. You can speak with Sister Connie um, about those spots. We have tickets available for the Evening of Elegance, which is on October 19th. So you can get your dancing shoes ready, get your outfit ready, buy your tickets. Um, you can, the tickets are $125 each. You can pay in installments. So you have a bit of time between now and October um, to get your ticket for the evening of elegance. In terms of birthdays this week, we have a few people that are celebrating. So celebrating on August 1st, can't believe it's already the end of the month. <laughs> but celebrating on August 1st, we have Jason Ramasar. Celebrating on the 2nd, we have Shalon Jeffers and Rayshawn Jeffers Hunter. And on August 3rd, we have Gabriel Joe. 
So happy birthday to everyone who is celebrating in the coming week. And we can sing. Happy birthday to them. to everyone who's celebrating in the coming week and thank you all i wish you all a wonderful and blessed week ahead take care uh, please for other pastoral services if you need me please i'm no more at holy cross priory but i think the archdeacon supplied my telephone number 647-466-8800 but if you need me personally, immediately, please come to St. Hilda's Towers, uh, at Bishop Grant's Worthy Building. You go to the office, my apartment is 1709. You will find me there. Recessional him. How great thou art.
Go in peace, love, and serve the Lord.